Do you dare to adventure into Lunalandia, where adventure finds its bravest explorers? Hey, yo, my planet coaster friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today, we're going to be looking at Lunalandia, created by Dave, an expert in this community, and here they say Hi, Lunalandia, or Daftaling, as some people like to call it, has been my main project for the last two and a half years, and it features various different themed lands. The park initially started out as a small submission for a 15 by 15 mini park contest in Discord that I never submitted. I started with the idea of making a tiny steampunk section first, and then everything got out of hand, and, and all of a sudden, I finished the park in front of me. Big thanks to my curious mind, who was a big help during the final stages of this project and all the people who supported me along the way. Hope you enjoy my first large scale park project. Uh, some pointers here, read the disclaimers and instructions on the workshop page. And the uh, Jiangxi Temple is a custom madhouse attraction consisting of a pre-show and a main ride. Play the sequencer at the end of the queue and proceed through the doors as they open. There's a one minute gap between the end of the show and the start. So patience is advised. So what does the Steam page say? Regarding the rest of the park, indoor sections are best enjoyed at night. Lunalandia is quite heavy piece count and there's a lot of Team TK. Some coasters were designed using mods as they should work regardless. The audio can cut out when you're near the coaster track segments all right um luna landia is not functional which means guests cannot enter the park there's copyright music in this park a folder that doesn't include copyright music has been added which we downloaded and thank you for that dave you will get the custom media notification is missing loading up the park ignore it disable ride breakdowns which we have okay so we've read the disclaimers let's get right to it All right, <clears throat> welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Lunalandia. As they mentioned, it is not a functional park for whatever reason. Uh, some of these paths might not be these ones, but some of the paths throughout the park, yeah, like these ones over here, they're fake paths. So that's why the guests can't actually come into the park because some of these paths have been custom built piece by piece by piece rather than using the pathing system that's included in Planet Coaster. Also, let me get the volume up. Oh, it's at 70%. Okay, well, I guess it'll get louder as we get deeper into the park. So yeah, we can't actually let, there's also no guest spawner. So we're going solo on this one today. It's running pretty good considering how heavy the park is and how much TMTK is in the park. A lot of custom assets that uh, you probably have never seen before and it's looking fantastic. Also, Dave is doing things the crazy way where this rooftop is made out of 151 shingles. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of amazing custom assets that give this a unique look that's never quite seen before. Look at this park entrance, that is beautiful. El Dorado Express, we have custom image posters there. Really cool stuff. So we're going solo on this one and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. There's a lot to look at. A lot of really cool custom stuff. Oh, look at that. A panning screen for the map here. Oh, look at that. We zoom in. You are here. Wow. That means every you are here sign is going to have a custom screen. And I did download a bunch of uh, WebM files for that. Actually never seen an interactive screen map like this before. Zero minutes on all the queues because there's nobody in the park. Look at this. This is crazy. <clears throat> Giving us a little bit of a tour of the park there. That's great. Really well done. Nice little like presentation there, video. That is incredible. Impressing me already. All of these custom houses and builds are gajillions of pieces because they're all made out of these custom shingles and rooftops. And that is why this park comes out to be a, a heavy, heavy hitter in terms of detail, aesthetics and design. And, um, you know, while it's not an end-to-end -end sprawling mega park, it uses a lot of these custom theme maker toolkit assets everywhere, which again is going to give us an aesthetic like nothing you've ever seen before. All the little signs and stuff. I'm assuming this is the queue. Standard queue. We're going down. Look at this. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure I might be mistaken by this, but I'm pretty sure these like clay rocks are TMTK. And what I mean by that is theme Jurassic Rock theme maker toolkit. So somebody had made these in a different program like Maya Blender 3D Studio Max, imported them to uh, Planet Coaster. And that means that they're not in the base game. So you have to download them externally. Same with some of these like trash bins and little bits of realism. Even maybe these chain linked uh, guards are also custom. And that's where like the frames will dip once in a while um, because it is so heavy. But we're throwing power at this thing here today. So frame tears should be at a minimum for the most part, but definitely still noticeable here and there. But uh, yeah, this is this is crazy custom assets like nothing you've seen before. And I really couldn't quite appreciate that. I think we're getting lost in this queue. It is quite a long and lengthy one. Good googly moogly. And it looks like we could jump the fence here. Different rows, cues for each of the rows. That's a very nice detail. Look at that. And here we are at the first coaster of the day, ladies and gentlemen. It's called Atla. And here's a look at the stats. About a kilometer in length, 50 miles per hour, five inversions on this, some airtime counts as well, and 100 seconds in duration. Let's give it a go. We're gonna ride it multiple perspectives, starting with the track view, and maybe we'll check it out at night as well. Let's do it. Uh, they mentioned in the disclaimer somewhere something about the audio cutting out. We just experienced that on this coaster here. Uh, look at the little realism there with the transfer tracks and the, all the different maintenance bays. Really cool stuff. And the atmosphere of this is astonishing. The layout was astonishing. Everything about this is an S tier creation. Custom boarding station here. Everything custom, custom, custom. And as a result, we also got to experience a very custom terrain like nothing we've seen in the past. So that is absolutely amazing. We did track view, but I kind of want to experience this from like a seat view perspective as well so we could get the actual you know pov let's try this Amazing. Uh, if they did use the three meter smoothing trick, it did seem better in track view than it did seat. A little bit of hitching here and there, but not too bad overall. Let's see, do we have any nighttime lighting on this coaster here? It appears like we do. So one more ride and maybe we could switch things up like go look forward at the back of the train. I don't know if that works with this type of car. Uh, yeah, it will. Let's, let's check it out.
absolutely incredible atmosphere at nighttime. Let's take another look at this. It is a little bit unfortunate we're getting the audio cutting out here and there, but there was a disclaimer saying that that might happen. Not entirely sure why that is happening. I haven't experienced that before, but um, it was noted on. Yeah, the, the way that these custom clay jurassic rocks as they're called has this subtle bit of lighting on it gives it some really nice hues and shadows a very cool and transformative atmosphere at both day and uh night they have two completely different distinct feels and looks depending on the day and night which gives you two completely different experiences which i really am a fan of incredibly well done and that is setting the bar extremely high for the first coaster of the day of what appears to be a remarkable theme park this is um it's even pushing my computer to the limits it's pretty drastic because of all these custom assets in the past i, I moaned and groaned about it and it doesn't seem to be as much of an issue anymore but while we were riding that coaster we were experiencing some hitches here and there however it, i was getting a, a consistent 50 frames per second so it's like, well, if you're getting 50 FPS, what's the hitching from? And that is because of the amount of assets. But I can actually come to appreciate now the Theme Maker Toolkit. <laughs> Look at that. The custom sign is now telling you we are here. So there's a lot of different videos for each one of the different signs throughout the park, which is really, really cool. Now, I, I'm just following the path. Should I be going this way? I mean, I guess why not? We, we're here now. But yeah. As I mentioned, there's some strange hitching happening now in here and then. That is because of all the heavy custom assets. But to uh, it is has come to this point now where I can appreciate it finally by throwing some power towards it. And as a result, we get to see some details and intricate environments and setups like nothing we've seen before. And it's quite refreshing for a change. But as a result, we will get a hitch now and then even if the frame rate appears to be good. So we have this like steampunk town. I have seen these assets recently in the last month or so we featured some steampunk creations that use these exact assets here that I was kind of ooing and awing over and how they add a lot more detail to the steel work of a steamwork park that just Planet base Coaster Planet Coaster can't do. Got some speakers and stuff. Problems. You must be a minimum of 1.4 meters tall to ride. Ah. Look at this place. Got a uh, telescope observatory tower there. So cool. Oh wow, a river rapids going through all of this. That seems pretty exciting. I keep looking for the queue, but I f keep finding chains. I will get there eventually. Here we go. Mechanica. Wow. This is amazing. <laughs> Would you look at that? Some ride stats here. Very cool. And here we go, another intensely realistic and intricate queue. Wow. Wow, freaking wee. Probably hop over this one here. Now I gotta keep my eyes out because one of these rides, which was it, um, use, uh, was Madhouse or something? Jiangxi Temple? Uses a, uh, sequencer for a pre-show or something so we'll have to check that out as we go should i be at nighttime here it said something about indoor coasters should be looked at at night but i don't know exactly what that means we're indoor now but we weren't just a second ago but the atmosphere down here is unbelievable Wow, freaking we. So we have an invert, two-seater, suspended steel hydra. Swapped out the train. Interesting. 600 meters in length, 46 miles per hour. Two inversions on this. We're going to go seat view, and off we go. saw a bit of a flicker there. There might be a sequencer trying to force it at night. I'm not entirely sure, but 
I wanted to try and ride this at day perspective, but this might be a night only coaster. We'll find out in a second when we try to give it a ride at daytime after. Wow, incredibly smooth coaster experiences so far. Let's see if we can actually get this to go again at daytime. Maybe not the case. Oh, yep, we can do it at day. Let's go. Beautiful atmosphere at daytime. And I really like this little pier area down here as we get to the top of the lift. Look at that. You can walk around all that. Little swampy area. It's pretty cool. Well, short, that is a visual masterpiece. I mean, all of the details gone into this in the steampunk area are just incredible. And the coaster experiences themselves have been remarkably smooth. Why am I not seeing it? Ah, here we go. Exit. Get hit by the train on the way out. Yeah, really impeccable details. The Theme Maker Toolkit is actually going a really long way here. And we get into the shop. We can buy some t-shirts and stuff. Get some photos. Really cool. I love that custom lift hill there, too. Has a great appearance in the uh, park. Sets itself as a nice landmark as well. Uh, this is the entrance to this area. I kind of want to pop out here and take a peek and see if we missed anything out here. Because we came in through the back or side alleyway. Yeah, we never really kind of... I might have come through here and into there, right? Yeah, that's how we, we went. So it is a bit of like a star shape. Everything brings you back to the center. So we could actually go over to the Buckaroo Gulch from here, which I actually kind of want to do because this wooden coaster looks ridiculous. Uh, tons of custom supports on this woody from the looks of things. Yep, a whole bunch of them all over the place. Great vibes, cool music. The Buckaroo Gulch and some more screens. You are here. I love that. That is a nice subtle touch. The shooting gallery. Great little shooting game over there. Some amazing viewpoints, custom boards going across the uh, coaster there. That is amazing. All the woodwork gone into this boarding station looks incredible. It also appears to be a dueling coaster, which makes it even more awesome. But yeah, again, look at all of these custom supports. Just adding to uh, <laughs> the amazingness of the Woody. We got the rodeo over here. This appears to be the entrance. And it uh, looks like there's two queues. You can go left or right. We're going to go left here today. Great atmosphere, great ambience. Wow, I love the garden work on the sides here. Ooh, this is looking amazing. The bowl. What's the bowl? Are we going in here? We can go up this way too. There's two ways to go. I guess one takes you up this side and the stallion. So it's the bull and the stallion because it's a dueling coaster. So at that fork there's where you make your choice. Interesting. Wow. Look at this. All right. The stallion is the first one up. We got 520 meters in duration, 46 miles per hour. Some airtime counts on this one. And that one's taken off right now. So why don't we hop onto this guy? Uh, enjoy it in the traditional seat view. 
try something different for the other one, but I also want to see it at night, so we might ride this a few times because it's looking absolutely incredible. Let's go. Wow, incredible. I definitely want to check out the nighttime lighting going on to the second coaster, which are very similar stats. You can take a look at them there. We got one going up the, the lift right now, and uh, we could try this a couple ways. Try to check out the, the, the track view for starts. The atmosphere of this is surprisingly really nice at nighttime for a wooden coaster. There's a few dark spots over there, but for the most part, you don't really see wooden coasters uh, have an overwhelming amount of lighting. But the areas around the park that we're passing through are really well done. And it makes for, again, another transformative experience during the day, to, uh, day and night. Really, really well done. Stallion and the Bull. The Buckaroo Bay. What was it called? The Buckaroo Gulch? I don't remember now. Oh, there we go. We got a custom bull there. Did the other side have a stallion? Maybe not. Very cool, though. I like the atmosphere here at nighttime. A soft, a soft subtle glow and hue to everything, but looking incredible during the daytime as well here. The theming on everything is just astonishing. The realism is incredible. I mean, I love it. And each area is very heavily themed, very heavily themed, but all centers around like one ride. I can very much appreciate that. You're going in, you're seeing a lot of theming. You make your way to one queue that has just an incredible amount of detail on the ride itself. And it's all kind of built for this one attraction. I love it. Now we have a blacksmith area. I mean, this area is a little bit more sprawling, but this side of the park for the Buckaroo area feels a lot different than what we experienced over there. We got these Adobe builds over here. 
whereas the other side had more woodwork. Here's like a more of that clay and concrete and rocks. Um, the other side felt a little bit more custom on the wood stuff. Look at this, even custom fences that I've never seen before. Those are looking great. Wow, look at that, little hot springs going on over here. Oh my goodness. And this is the power of the Theme Maker Toolkit. Great job today for sifting through it all, figuring out exactly what they wanted to do. Look at this little uh, pond with the water wheel, custom water wheel. This stuff looks incredible. Really, really nice. Okay. <clears throat> There's another station here. Let's make our way into it. All these buildings utilizing Midway games and fun little shops, lockers, all sorts of really cool stuff. Making use of all of the interiors. I love it. This is a little rodeo made out of a flat ride. That's incredible. The barrel roll. Very nice integration on that. Okay, it is a ride in Planet Custer. It, felt, it feels so different. I was like, is this a custom ride? Why don't I recognize that? You transformed that quite a bit there. All right, where am I going? I'm definitely not getting to the coaster from here. And I'm leaving this area of the park. There's other more over there. How many themed areas did they say in this park? Like six or something? And I, I could have missed something in the previous areas. I will do some backtracking as well as look at the, the ride list and look at everything from a bird's eye view near the end. Uh, just to double check. Is this... That, that feels like it would be the exit. I could be wrong about that, but there, uh, Dave has been pretty good about making the signs so far. Unless it's the El Dorado Express, this could be the entrance right here. Let's check it out. Yeah, I quite like the walk around in this park because it offers so many different visuals that I'm not familiar with. I feel like I'm playing Planet Coaster 2 because there's so many new assets here. Really, really cool. Mm-hmm. These are really crazy cues, by the way. We're getting lost in here. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this is quite the wine. No wonder, I was like, maybe the queue's over there, maybe the queue's over there. Um, the queue is everywhere. <laughs> it really passes through the entire themed area and brings us all the way back around to the station. Now it all makes sense to me. All right, here we are at the El Dorado Express, the American Arrow with a train swap out. Let's uh, ride this 1.3 kilometers in length. We're gonna go to the back of the train looking forward and off we go.
freaking way some amazing visuals on that exploration and as you may have heard you could hear the launch or the boosters used in there as dave mentioned at the top of the video that they did use some mods to make some of these coasters and even though i don't have those mods downloaded it is working as intended and that allowed us to actually boost the coaster okay this one's leaving right now uh actually i'll probably just let it run through again i want to try this at nighttime in track view so you can see the tracks are slightly different than what we are used to it's it's a mixture because this actually says that it's an american looping arrow coaster so there might yeah there's two coaster tracks here there's uh one for the the tracks and one for the mechanics that's actually really impressive to me so yeah you can see that there's uh all of this looping arrow corkscrew coaster but under Underneath it all, or over top of it, is the wooden coaster, the uh, the tracks, which is really, really impressive. So why don't we uh, jump over this one here and try it out in like a track view at nighttime? Let's go. Good googly moogly. I am just flabbergasted by some of these scenes. They are so astonishing. The nighttime lighting again is just ridiculously well done. Wow freaking wee. I gotta show you guys this from a bird's eye view as well. Let's uh, flip it back over to daytime here. This is uh, a secondary track that's been built solely for the purpose of the visuals of the wooden boards. And it's built identically to that of the corkscrew coaster. When you combine them together, you get the mechanics of the corkscrew with the launch effects, which is, uh, I, I, I don't even, normally the, the, that, that particular coaster doesn't have drive tire launch tires but I guess with the mods, it allowed them to add that um, module. And we get this really interesting mashup. It has the visuals of a mine train coaster, but it has the mechanics of a launch coaster. And I love it. Some of these visuals on the coaster as well, like coming through here, look at that. The layers are so cool. And like I said, the uh, differentiation of the, the areas of the Buckaroo Gulch are really nice. I love all the woodwork over here. And then as we go over here, we're getting more of that canyon vibes with the hot springs, the rock work, 
the adobe buildings on the right here. I've never seen assets like this in Planet Coaster because they are custom imported assets. And boy, oh boy, does it really take it and elevate it to the next level. I love it. Absolutely breathtaking. Really, really well done. So it appears like we have a water cascade coaster, boat ride. Who knows, maybe that uses mods and combines them together. I apparently just crossed over into a different themed area. But I think that's going to do it for the Buckaroo Gulch. Which um, was highly impressive. I really, really thoroughly enjoyed that area. Um, I thought the steampunk area was just remarkable. But I think this might be like my favorite Western style area that I've ever seen because it brings in so many unique and interesting assets. So I believe this is, if I'm not mistaken, the one that has the pre-show that I should be going in at nighttime. So we are we still in the Buckaroo Gulch? Because this ride is just at the back. So this actually might still play off of the, the 1800s vibe, I guess, if I'm not mistaken. Where am I going? Was this not the queue? Toilets? Ah, the Jiangxi Temple. This is it here. So well integrated, I almost missed it. These are not your standard walkways, openings, and queues. Because normally in Planet Coaster... Oh, we have our pre-show here. Play me. Do I go in? Because normally in Planet Coaster you have, like, the queues, right? Automatic door? Is something not happening that should be happening? There's a screen there. Is there missing audio? They, they did say that, like, some of the... It was a cold oh, night. Oh, here we go. Thunder struck, awakening the explorers who tried to venture into the Forbidden Village. They found themselves trapped inside the Temple of Jiangxi. It was unknown to them how they got there. But what they did know is that they weren't alone. The air was thick with an eerie silence that left them feeling uneasy. They tried to find a way out, but began to feel a strange presence, as though something was watching them from the shadows. A low oh, moan oh, oh, echoed cool. throughout the temple. The brave explorers had unwittingly stumbled into the realm of the undead, cursed by the temple of Jiangxi. And now they were trapped, doomed to face the wrath of these restless spirits. They knew that they must find a way to break the curse, or be doomed to suffer its wrath forever. Wow. That was really well done. Not only did the screen have like... Oh, there we go. The door opens up. Not only was their voice acting a cool little video, but... Are these seats? Is there more pre-show? But the lights in the room also went with the show, which I thought was really, really impressive. Are we waiting for the next part of the show to start? Oh, wow, it continues. I think. Cool. The triggers on the lighting with the sound effects is just... Wow. Well done. Whoa. 
Are you kidding me? No freaking way! <laughs> I did not expect that. What? My God. I'm getting dizzy, but I'm still, uh, jaws on the floor still. Wow. You should not be able to do this in Planet Coaster. Wow, freaking Lee. That is so cool. So freaking well done. We came in here and I'm like, why are there seats? You can't do anything interesting like this in Planet Coaster. What? Why would there be seats here? And I had all these thoughts going through my head. This here is custom theme maker toolkit animations, allowing the room to move like we're in some sort of a spinning stormy ship or something like that. And uh, that took me for surprise. You actually created a simulation, like a ride experience. This is taking realism and Planet Coaster to a whole new level. Realism evolved. This is just incredible. I am at a loss for words at this point. Well done. Wow. Oh, that was the ride. Wow! I'm not even mad at that. I thought that was all a cue with the pre-show and that actual simulation. That, 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 like, room there was basically like one of those uh, simulation rides. You turned assets and Theme Maker Toolkit into a custom ride. You built your own flat ride or simulation ride in Planet Coaster. And I thought that was all gonna lead up to like a roller coaster, but that being the ride itself is not disappointing at all because A, I've never seen anything like that in my life and B, it's just incredibly daring and innovative. My God, my goodness, well freaking done. I had no idea what to expect going into this park and I never really do and that is the great thing about first impressions, and you've got me, you've got my jaw on the floor with this creation here today. This boat ride, this cascade looks like it's gonna roll all along these like rice paddy hills or whatever these are, and it looks super intricate, and I can't wait to get to that wherever it may be. Let's see, maybe the map will help us? I wish there was a pause button. You are here, how do I get to that ride? I know it's here. Maybe the, uh, I didn't see the entrance over here when I walked back here. Let me just double check. Because these queues, uh, uh, that's what I forgot to say. Like, this could be an exit. It most likely is, because there's a shop out here. What I was going to say before we got on that previous ride was that it's hard to recognize the cues other than like if there's a big sign they've Dave has done a good job introducing them with signs um but the the normal planet coaster paths that you get to build with in terms of like cues even if you go with the smallest cues possible like the the two meter width ones they have this distinct look to them whoops I am screwing up his part let's undo that <laughs> Stop it! 
Um, they, and they have these special gates where when you see the gate, you see the employee, you go, okay, that's like, that's where the ride begins. And I'll, I have a hard time recognizing things because of that. But it's also really interesting and adds this little bit of realism to everything because everybody, everything is using these custom exits and entrances that, again, are very new to me. Everything's very new feeling. Now, we might be able to get to that ride. Maybe this is the entrance here. Wow. When you get to the entrance, it's very recognizably so, the entrance. And uh, getting to them is a little bit of a, a fun little exploration game. The entrances aren't in the most obvious places. When you see something, you go, okay, the entrance must be around the corner. And not, not in this case. We have to, like, truck a little bit further, go around a little bit more, and then you get to the queue, and these queues lead you on these, like, crazy fun endeavors. Whoa! This, this park just keeps throwing surprises at, at us. It's a huntsman, but look at this boarding station. I've never seen anything like this. A re-motion track ride. I don't know which one I'm supposed to leave on. Just for immersion sakes, it's probably better if I close it down because then I get on the first vehicle, right? Which one's the first vehicle? And we don't see all of them in front of us. We're the, we're the first, we're in the front. Let's try this out, wow. Looks like Halloween's not over yet, guys. <laughs> nice little spooky dark ride. Let's go. That is an incredible scene. Oh my God. This is so cool. <laughs> My goodness, would you look at that? Oh, this is spooky evolved as well. I am loving the visuals on this. It, it just veers away from that traditional stuff that we normally see from these spooky Huntsman rides and Planet Coaster vanilla and uh, really creates some ca captivating atmospheres that is like nothing I've ever seen. Love the drapes on that chandelier. So many nice little touches in the visuals. Well freaking done. <laughs> There's a skeleton riding the chandelier. Look at this. This is madness. happening this this park just continues to surprise me holy moly if you're a fan of the show and you've been watching stuff i mean we just finished our hallow week and we featured a lot of halloween stuff and through that experience you would have saw a lot of like vanilla spooky and this just takes the bar and raises it so much higher. While that ride was a little bit short, it was quality, quality over quantity. And every one of those scenes had so much impeccable details that I have never, ever, ever seen constructed in such a way before in this game. Um, hands down, just one of the best Huntsman spooky rides I have ever seen. Just the most incredible atmospheres and scenes. Look at all these little boats and stuff. The boat ride's gotta be around here because I'm just getting further and further into the park and further and further away from that ride that I saw. And you know what, if I missed it, I'll find it eventually. 
uh, like I said, not everything is completely obvious like it normally is. This is definitely not your traditional park spotlight and uh, it's starting to be more and more apparent as I'm going further and further onto these rides. And here's another water ride. This actually might just be for visuals because there's like a, a custom built boat ride here. Water guns. Harbor battle. This might just be constructed for show because these boats can't move. That's cool though. Again, never seen anything like that before. So I might have missed a couple rides along the way. You guys might have been screaming at your monitors. The queue's over there. I know Dave is. <laughs> but this is my experience here today, and you guys are coming along with me. So wherever the park may lead me is where I may go, and uh, I will backtrack and find things that I missed. So we're in the whole back area of the park here, looping our way back around. I'm like literally... Uh, just blown away. I just looked over at my recording. It says 56 minutes and I'm like, where has the time gone? How are we already one hour into this park spotlight? Um, I know we've been on a few coasters, but I know there's a lot more that I haven't looked at yet. And I think for a change, like what's stored in the boxes provided on the opposite side of the station. What's very um refreshing about this park. I'm, 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 again, like, I've seen so many things in this game and what you can do with the pieces that the game provides you. But I've never seen this before. I've never seen, <laughs> I've never seen any of this. Even the floors are custom. The pathways are custom. And it brings me back to, like, the very beginning days, like the first, you know, dozen or so park spotlights when you're going through these and you've never seen any of this stuff before and it's all new, right? And um, I guess what I'm trying to say is just looking around, looking at things is half the fun here. And it normally it is, but I, I have over the years and over the last like couple hundred spotlights, um, stopped like looking at all the little nitty gritty things and pointing out all the little minute details because I've seen how they've been assembled. I've seen various layouts like that. You got a statue of a penguin there. <laughs> Our community mascot. But yeah, the, the kind of like the layouts and um, what am I trying to say? scenes become recognizable over time but nothing here is recognizable which is making me take a second look at things and double back and really appreciate these things like again i mentioned this earlier in the video it feels like i'm playing planet coaster 2. minimum of 1.1 meters to ride without an adult and remember you will get wet so it's a fake ride, as mentioned. I like this concept, though. So you get water guns, you get into the boat. It won't move, unfortunately. Would have been pretty hard to come up with a way to make that work. But the guests would get to travel along in these boats, battling each other with squirt guns. And I like the fact that you actually made a cue for it. You made it atmospheric. Even though it's a pretend ride, it's really cool. It's really well thought out. Very neat. Even that is, um... Innovative. Very, very innovative. So the ride exit takes us over here. So it's like, I haven't... Did I go on this coaster? Did I go on that coaster? I, I don't think I've been on half of these coasters. So we're gonna we're gonna make our way. I've I found the exits quite easily. <laughs> Here's another exit. Or is that? Yeah, it says ride exit. How do I get on you? Okay, I had to do some cheating. When I came down this way and I was looking around. 
I had no idea that I walked right by the coaster. Yes, this is the entrance to the ride way over there. <laughs> so again, everything's not very traditional. It's gonna throw me off. And unless people start building parks like Dave here, which is one of a kind and very unlikely, I don't get any practice at this. <laughs> but I'm enjoying getting lost in this and not knowing what to expect. It's throwing me for a loop. And I very much like that. Super unfamiliar. It's taking me out of my comfort zone. We got a junior here. It's the Nessie Junior Dragon. 400 meters, 70 seconds in duration, 28 miles per hour, family friendly coaster. I'll cut to it when it's ready. Oh, one's pulling in right now. Look at that. Um, that one's going up the lift, but I want to experience going up the lift. We're going to go at the back of the train because we won't want the big dragon in our way. But up one. Let's check this out. Oh, the music cut up for some reason. A few audio bugs throughout this park so far, but what can you do? Not complaining. There's been more wins than losses here. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this whole thing is a win. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Love a good uh, junior, and that absolutely delivered on the visual. The view from the uh, lift was incredible. I gotta say, I've said this time and time and time again throughout the uh, history of Park Spotlight and Coaster Spotlight, and one of the main reasons I have not let up on spotlights is every time I open up a new park that's submitted for 2022, 2023, so on and so forth, I continuously find that people are innovating and doing things that I've never ever seen before done in this game. Even seven years later, people are reinventing the wheel. And Dave here has reinvented it on multiple levels that just astounds me. I just can't even. Wow. Yeah, to my previous point is uh, there's so much innovation in this park, realism, use of TMTK, creativity, that nobody has ever come close to this, I guess, revolutionary design style. Dave is listed as an expert, has been working on this for the last two and a half years, absolutely deserves to be legend in my opinion off of this alone, 100%. I found this as I was kind of cheating looking for the entrance to this ride. I thought this was quite creative. It's the sail hoist. We got these, uh, I don't even know how this works. They drop, it's like a baby drop tower. Hoist them up and drop them. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Just like custom flat rides. This is really, really, really something else. What a treat today. Look at this little pirate playground. That's quite fun. Huh. You can hit up the slide here. Whee! <laughs> so cool. I've gotten so lost. I, I know there's two major attractions that I have not found, so I'm gonna cheat and find them. All right, so I don't know if I came down this back alleyway yet. 
But that looks amazing. Do we go through here? Other more. I'm not sure. But Wyvern here, which I did not see, is the entrance to our, like, our co coaster that's in the center of the park, our centralized coaster. A beautiful sign on this, a crazy dragon up above. Probably want to peek this one at night. And then we'll ride it through at night, go through once again at day. But this could be, um one of the, I guess, main attractions of the whole park. It's definitely up front and center. But this park uh, continues to surprise me. So I have no idea what to expect going on this. And I don't think we're just done yet. This, uh... Park is quite deceptive in how... Like, if you look at the footprint of the park, which we will from a bird's eye view at the end of the park, it's not nearly as big as some of the other mega parks we've seen throughout the years. But we're already over an hour on this recording. So, again, it's very deceptive on how much content is actually here. Quality over quantity, in my opinion. There's a look at the stats if you want to see them. Let's go ride like a dragon. I don't know why the audio loves to cut out the moment we get on a ride. <laughs> this park hates me, <laughs> but I love this park. Oh, brother. Oh, wow. I am I am not getting lucky with this audio. <laughs> oh brother. Okay, we're going daytime. Track view. Let's go. Moly, I'm gonna sound like a broken record if I make the same comments again, but that track view was remarkably smooth and that environment was just next level. Oh my freaking goodness. This park just continues to deliver, continues to surprise around every corner. A little bit unfortunate, some of the audio's not like lining up with the experience properly or cutting out some little hiccups here and there, but Again, there's way more wins with this park than anything, with a few things not working here and there. Definitely forgiving of that. 
There's a, a beautiful stage for performance and shows over here. That's cool. Now, did we go to other more? Other more? Maelstrom. We could go. What? Is this is this the entrance to the boat ride that I was looking for the whole time back here? It might just be. But there's also a water cascade. If I'm not mistaken, there's two water rides. Three, if you can include that little pretend boat ride as well. Monte Leon over here. And that is the cue for that. Wow. Okay. Let's go into the uh, belly of the beast here, into the maelstrom. I like this little hatch here for the cue. Attention. The <laughs> Whoa! Some intense music playing there. Woo. Incredible lighting yet again. What an adventure. There's bathrooms here if you need a break. Oh no, that's just an exit. If you change your mind, I guess. Unless somehow I took a wrong turn, and now I'm going up the exit. I don't know. But it feels like I'm going the right way. Maybe? Now I'm, I'm second-guessing myself. Well, I guess we'll find out in a second here. I really like how the cues actually feel like an experience of their own. We get to look at the ride from all angles as we're kind of like anticipating the journey ahead. I really like that. Okay, here's the Maelstrom. It is a River Rapids. I have to find which boat to go on, which is always somewhat challenging. This might be it right here. Yes, indeed we do. And I think this is the perspective I want to go on. on Maelstrom, please be aware that you must be a minimum of 1.4 meters tall to ride without an adult. All those articles are- There we go. I am set to night, and I'm wondering if that's the right idea, but because this park has been so impressive and it's such a one-of-a-kind experience, I think it's fair to ride this twice, once at day and once at night. All, also, the lighting has just been exceptionally well done, so I think they both offer good experiences, so we'll do the River river Rapids twice, which is just a first for me to say. What's happening here? Is this a sequencer? The lights are out, and I can't turn them on. I'm moving the mouse around, turning the flashlight on. I don't know what's happening here. Okay, it was just a transitional scene. Very interesting. Whoa! Oh my god, we're going down the maelstrom right quite literally. Wow! <laughs> that is remarkable. Look at this. We're wow. We're traveling around. What is it? The porticullis? Is that what they're called? Of the castle. Very interesting design of a castle here. I'll say it again. This park continues to surprise me. My goodness.
Ooh. <laughs> Let's do it again in a day. There's some great views and perspectives. Now, it did appear like there was a day-night sequencer. So some of it was intended to be at night and some of it was intended to be a day. But I quite like the lighting and the atmosphere. So let's, let's go again. Okay, so this was like an elevator scene. That's what was happening here. And you could hear the duck, 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 duck. I'm not entirely sure how they did this. Pretty cool though. I think we're just going up a lift right now and the scene went to night, but we went into an elevator. So it's kind of like smoke and mirrors, but still really gives off the, per the perception that we were traveling up an elevator. And from here, we could just take a look around at the park at daytime, look at some of the beauty, all the different rides that we've been on, the experiences that we had we're right in the center of the park here. And I don't think we're done. I'm pretty sure there was another, unless this is the ride that I was thinking that I was trying to get on this whole time, there might be a water cascade back there that I couldn't seem to find the entrance for. A few of these have been a little bit of an adventure to try to find the cues, but I believe we have at least one more ride to go on. And I'll check the ride list. There might be another hidden one somewhere. Definitely worth another ride through. I've noticed some extra details, some little staff areas and little bits of realism here and there that I didn't quite see during the nighttime, but that uh, atmosphere was really great at night as well. But the clarity of the visuals, much better during the daytime for sure. Wow. And then we go into another shop here. You get your pictures, get your posters and your t-shirts. Love to see it. Let's go. And out we go past the pink penguin. And I'm gonna find the entrance to that other ride. I was looking around for this boat ride entrance and uh, there's an entrance over here. There's all these like staff entrances and they're all over the place. And I, I was super confused on like how to get in this. Over here, Shangri-La, the log flume ride. When I came into this temple area, somehow I didn't realize I was supposed to go in here. And I, instead I kind of walked in here and we found the Shang, uh, Jiangxi Temple, and I completely disregarded the log flume, Shangri-La. So you have to go in here. <laughs> it's a bit of a tight squeeze, and again, an unorthodox cue uh, opposed to that of what we're normally used to. And there are a lot of ways to get out from here. You can actually go through some of these staff doors, and they will, in fact, pop you out to the other pathways and all these different entrances and gateways, um, while super realistic, had me also flabbergasted. Um, but this is the official entrance to the official ride, and I did, in fact, miss it. And this might be the last one of the day. I will check the ride list. 
I wouldn't be surprised if there is another one. But here we go. We have the Shangri-La uh, Water Cascade Coaster Water Ride. There's a look at the stats if you want to see them. And I'll cut to the next one here that's leaving. Okay, I have found it. We'll go seat view. And off we go. Oh, 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 that's a cool mechanic I've never seen before. Oh my goodness, the mods are great. The mods have really been awesome in this park. I love it. What a cozy little area down here. I just, I am, I, whew, I can't even with the details in this park. There's so many good things to comment on this from this, this crazy intricate queue. Like you can exit multiple ways. We can actually go through these doors here to exit if we want. And there's another actual exit over here. Uh, or maybe that leads, that, that's the queue. I, I don't even know. It, it's a very intricate pathing system. And you can only get that by not using the planet coaster paths. Like I said, if I delete the floors, there's no pathing. It's all faked. There are some serious advantages to not having guests in the park. For, this is the first time I've ever seen guests not added to a park, specifically to create a more immersive and realistic park layout that only can be experienced on foot by the player and not by the AI. There's uh, major, major advantages. Not only that, like, pathing in this game can be very janky. You wouldn't be able to like connect it here and there and this and that and here and there and do all this stuff with the traditional pathing in this game. 
So with that, you're able to create these nooks and these like areas that you normally can't traverse through as an AI or, you know, like a, a path guided character. And as a result, you get these breathtaking scenes. And I really, really love the use of this um, Theme Maker Toolkit creating something I've never seen before. This very unique foliage and rock work combination. The usage of the mods where you get this little spin around mechanic was so cool. So many advantages to what Dave has done and really taking park design to a whole new level. Raising the bar like never before is what has been done here today. And I did not expect any of this going into it. I had no idea. It just kept on revealing its layers as we got further and further and further into the park. And what just started as exploring the park, what was a gorgeous park full of Theme Maker Toolkit and some really good coasters started to unfold into more and more and more as we went through. Now, before we end off, let me check the ride list and be sure that we didn't miss anything. All right, I have checked through the ride list and we have in fact hit everything. Here's a bird's eye view of the park. Like I said, it's not an end to end mega park experience. We have seen in the past parks that fill out from this corner to that corner to this corner and back and that are just absolute computer melters. Now I will say that this is a computer melter. There are times where I was getting 20 FPS, 30 FPS and other times 50. This would have absolutely melted my old computer specifically because of all these custom assets. And it seems to me, and uh, this has proven it, that the newer technology, the new advancements in hardware, such as the, uh, the one that I recently adopted, that the newer computers can handle the custom Theme Maker Toolkit. Whereas uh, previous, previously I would groan about it you know just a little bit too much usage of it and it would just drop what would be normally a 60 fps park down to like a 10 fps park they really had that much of an impact i don't know why uh just a, a newer cpu can really push those assets and handle them but we're still seeing the impact of it there as i'm looking at it right now i'm getting a frame count of 32 in a park that's literally an eighth of the size of what we're normally used to seeing so you know it does have its impact but not in a way where it's ruining the experience in fact it's doing the opposite for me here this has elevated the experience and as a result i can now comfortably say that i enjoy the use of the custom assets and they accentuate and elaborate on amazing environments and creations as we've seen from these captivating environments throughout this park not only that i've i've been a big advocate for mods for the last while when I've seen people do some pretty innovative stuff where you can change the mechanics and I guess modules of the coasters, allowing them to do things that they no normally wouldn't be able to do. So a combination, I've always been a fan of the mods and a, a combination of the mods with the Theme Maker Toolkit here has created for an experience like nothing ever before. If I subscribe to this park or enter this park without subscribing to the Theme Maker Toolkit, which took like over an hour to download them all, it was 100% worth the wait. If I didn't uh, subscribe to them, pretty much 90% of this park would be just invisible. It would be vanished from existence. And building with those assets, and I can show you here, this is all of the assets been used in this park that are custom. I have only subscribed to the assets used for this park. I clear out all of my assets every time I uh, start up a new park because having these loaded up and then adding in more for the next park and the next recording, they these actually begin to like stall the game. Um, it has to process all of them in the inventory, but you can see how many are used here. It's literally hundreds upon hundreds. Like what is a row here? This is like 20 in one row down across by like a uh, hundred down here there's at least 200 in here right <laughs> and to uh a props to dave because you have to search the workshop find oh can i you know find this asset this looks like it'll work somewhere in my park right not only like looking through and figuring out what you want to use and then searching through here to actually place it down and make use of it is an extraordinary takes an extraordinary amount of patience but only doing it this way and getting these assets and these like you know custom realistic bins fences clocks uh souvenir shops pictures you know you name it gated fences, uh, chain link fences, all of the things that made the queues extraordinarily unique 
like they were in this experience can only be done by going to the uh to download these custom assets as a result it created for something that i have never seen elevated creativity and there have been a handful of parks that are super memorable to me over the last year that i consider to be like top top ever creations and this has definitely entered into the top three i know um thunderland by rai rai is definitely one of them and uh this this is probably a contender for that spot rai rai's was more vanilla planet coaster big scale big picture lots of stuff everybody that watched that video has in agreements that it was the best park ever made because it is now trending as the number one planet coaster video on this channel and aside from my follow vi videos that went viral it is number three in popularity on the channel overall so i mean many many people think that Thunderland was the best park ever created and it went viral as so i hope that this is the case for this one as well if you guys enjoyed the park leave a comment leave a like share it on social media to increase engagement and we'll see if this is a competitor for the first place spot for best parks ever created but for me personally it is a strong runner-up as one of my second and if not you know competitor to my very 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 first and favorite park of all time and that is saying a lot because i have featured over 600 parks on this channel seen plenty of mini parks coasters uh exploration coaster parks thousands of creations in general and for this to be in my top three overall is saying a lot and as a result i would say that dave has immediately learned earned that legend spot in my opinion and will go down as one of my favorite creators and legend creators um because of all of the innovation and creativity you Used here. It's not just about making a fun park layout, which this was. It's about using those assets, those mods, in a very meticulous way, being very crafty and thinking about the attention to detail, the realism in every single corner of this park. Nothing was missed out on. It took me for a spin. It had me double checking things. It had me thinking, uh, you know, the way cues have been done are, I had to look for, I had to look at things in a different light and it felt different, felt like a unique experience. And after being over 600 parks and experiences to have a different feel, like I said, it felt like Planet Coaster 2 or something, something was different. That is impressive. That is my takeaway from this. Let's give it up for Dave. Luna Landia. Wow, freaking we. Also, as he said, uh, also known as Dave Deling. <laughs> Wow, two and a half years in the making was worth the wait. Sure, my video is going to be edited and it says an hour and 41 minutes. Probably chop it down to 120. You never know. But it far expect, uh, exceeded my expectations. Going over the length of a mega park that was twice or if not triple the size, still taking up the same amount of time to explore what was much more dense and compact, definitely goes to show that this is quality over quantity. And we could spend just as long in a in a smaller park because there are so many amazing features and details to look at along the way. And I feel like I've thoroughly looked at everything in this park. Yeah, there, there's so many good things that I highlighted along the way. A few hiccups with the audio here and there. You can't win them all. But as I said, there have been more wins than losses here. And I feel complete after this experience. So give it up for Dave. Uh, this turned out to be way more than I expected it to be. And I went into this with high, high expectations. And you blew those expectations of, uh, over, of the water and went even further above. So hats off to Dave. Absolutely incredible builder with an incredible park here today. What did you guys think? Throw your comments down below and get, uh, go to the workshop link if you own the game to give this a rating. As it stands currently, it has four out of five stars with 80 ratings. I believe if we get it to 100, it gets five stars. So get in there, give it a rating, guys. Let's bring this back to the front page. And uh, it's a fairly new creation for 2023, released in September. So, um still has a chance to get that five stars let's uh let's get it there that's gonna do it for me in today's episode of park spotlight guys thank you so much for watching and i hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day and we'll see you in the next video bye down